Hello. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at embossing a 3D image in order to create a coin, as you can see here. We're also going to be creating some text for this. I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on actually sculpting this and making it look good when you've actually embossed this down. Here you can see that we've got Matthew Bolton and this was a project that we'd done for the World Money Fair in 2016 and this was going to be part of the graphics that we had there. Now we had a bit of trouble actually getting an actual model of Matthew Bolton because if I were to actually sculpt this from scratch it would have taken quite a while and we had a limited time frame so what we wanted to do was get a 3D model of his head and scan it and then use the emboss tool within ArtCam to flatten this down and it would save most of the work. Now the problem with this was getting hold of an actual bust of Matthew Bolton and the only place that we could actually find one was at a church called St Mary's Church which is on the outskirts of Birmingham in a place called Hansworth and the vicar there kindly let us go over there and scan the bust. Now this was in situ so we could only really scan the front and parts of the side of the bust so you'll see that when we actually get to paste this down and flatten it down and then sort it all out. Now this is the actual church that we visited. As I said, this is in a place in Birmingham called Hansworth. There's a picture of the church and they have a few busts of some quite famous engineering figures. For instance, James Watt, Matthew Bolton. Here you can see the Matthew Bolton bust and this is one of the guys from Dalcam actually scanning the bust so we put a GoPro video camera just there just so you could see the process and this is how we actually got the 3D model Now obviously because we couldn't get round the back of the bust we're not going to have the back of it. Okay so let's make a start in ArtCam. Now the first thing that I need to do is select new project. The emboss wizard is only really available within the project settings or the project tree. So what you need to do is import a 3D model. So I'm going to take my Matthew Bolton, this STL file that I've been given. Okay, so there you can see the file imported. Now you can see straight away that we've got a few problems with this. You can see that there are spikes sticking up at the bottom. There's lots of holes in the model. And also, as I said previously, we've only really got the front of this. We've not got the sides of this because he couldn't get round there to actually scan it. So what I'm going to do is basically paste this down or flatten this down looking front on really. So here you can see all of the spikes basically where there are holes in the material. So what we're going to do is sort all of that out and when I flatten this down you won't see any of those anyway. So let's go to the emboss relief wizard which is down on the right hand side here. Select that and then this will ask me to select the view. So basically this is just asking me to set where I want this to be flattened down. So if I want it there, it will just flatten that down at that angle there. So ideally you would want to do a side profile like so, but because we've got all of this flat area, it's not really going to look right. So I'm going to do a front on view. 
So let's get that set up how I want it. So let's say like so, and this will flatten down as is. So when I'm happy with that, select next, and this will allow me to apply some perspective to this. So I can make it have lots of perspective, let's say like so, so it looks like I'm looking up at this guy and he looks really tall, or I can have no perspective. Okay, let's just add a little bit of perspective to it so it looks a little bit important and select next. Now, when I select next, this will tell me to select the detail. So I've got detail height and I've also got shape height. Now, in order to explain that, let me open up this picture and this will basically explain what this is actually talking about. So if you take a look on the left hand side, we've got just shape. The middle one is just detail and the far right one is a combination of both. So what you need to do is get a combination of both. Okay, so you need to get the balance right. If you have just all shape, it will just be quite smooth and you won't get any of the detail. If you had just detail, it will just be detail and it will be very noisy. So what you need to do is get a combination so you get the shape underneath the detail and then it gives you quite a nice looking emboss. Okay, now this is still not going to be perfect, but it's a starting point. And it's a much better starting point than using just shape detail or using just detail. So let's set the detail height. And I'm going to set that to one. And I'm also going to set the shape height to two. So I'm going to have a shape of two and the detail height is going to be one millimeter. So it's overall, it's going to be three millimeters. And then when I'm happy with that, I can select finish and it will basically flatten the 3D file down. So it's just calculating that and you can see it has flattened it down, but it's left the original 3D object over the top of it. So what we need to do is turn that off in the assembly. And you can do that by selecting the light bulb here. And there you can see the flattened relief. Okay, so if I just zoom that round, you can see I've got this flat relief. So it's just basically flattened that 3D file down. Now, as you can see, it's quite noisy. There's a little bit of detail, but probably a bit too much detail in there. You can see that I've got little bits where there are holes, etc. What I need to do is basically sort this out, okay? And I'm going to do that by sculpting. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks using sculpting. Okay, so in order to do that, I need to open up the model. So if I just expand the models, and then I basically go into normal art cam rather than the assembly. So I've got root assembly, which is basically what has got the detail on there and I've got the relief layer. So let's rename the root assembly. Not to Michael Bolton, let's rename it to Matthew Bolton. And then I can just delete the original relief layer because I don't really need that. So I've just got this one relief layer called Matthew Bolton. Now if I take a plan view of this and just zoom in here, you can see that this is the area that had all of those lung pieces sticking up. Now to get rid of that, what I can do is create a, a box around the area that I want to keep. And then I've got two options. I can either zero outside of the vector. So it just basically cuts whatever's outside of the vector. Or I can undo that and probably this method I would rather do, I can cookie cut this so it frees up that model or that relief. I can reset the relief that's lying underneath it so it gets rid of what's there. And then I can center the relief in the model. 
so it basically puts everything in the center rather than it being skewed up to the top okay so let's start sorting this out so the first thing that I'm going to do is smooth let's say the forehead so let's bring the radius down and let's also bring the strength down and I'm just going to start smoothing this so do that over the whole of the forehead and you can see that that's looking quite nice now now the trouble with this is that I can't really see if there are still any areas that need sorting out now a good tip to do using this is turn on the gradient analysis which will show angles so if there are any bits that are sticking out you can turn that on and it will actually show any any areas so if I select that you can see that it sort of shows me all of the areas a lot clearer okay so it's good to use that switch between the original material and the gradient analysis just in case you've you've missed something so let's turn off the smoothing go back to the material now I do like to set this up so I've got more of a matte material so if I go into the lights and material you can actually change the colour of this I like to have more of a, a darker sort of colour maybe a dark grey and I can apply that bring the shininess down the highlight intensity and it creates a more matte sort of finish and this is quite useful for picking out all of those areas so you can see them now you can also save this so at the top I've got some settings so I've got light and sculpt so I can select that and that's my typical sculpting material so I can just save that as a, as a, a preset so I quite like to use this material when I'm doing some sculpting it makes it a lot easier for me personally to see okay so let's go back to the smoothing tool and then I'm just going to smooth out a few more places now there are some shortcuts that you can use you see I've got this one next to smooth I can press 2 on the keyboard it goes to smudge, 3, deposit, 4, carve 5 is the erase tool 1, take me back to smooth so those are all set up by keys on the keyboard so 1 to 5 now you can also change the radius of the actual brush by pressing control down on the keyboard and then using the middle mouse button scroller to go in and out and that will change the actual size of the brush so just a few shortcut keys there might make your life a little bit easier okay so let's finish this guy's face also you can create a snapshot so let's say that I'm happy with that and I've took a snapshot and then I accidentally smooth all of the eye as you can see here and that's not looking good so what I can do then is select revert and it will go back to that original snapshot and this is all controlled by the undo so I can still press undo and it will go back beyond the snapshot so let's say for instance I get the erase tool take a snapshot so I can go back to this and I want to erase to the base plane so let's say that I've done that if I want to bring it back I can either erase to snapshot but the shortcut for that is pressing control on the keyboard so if I hold control down it will erase back so bring the material back okay 
So another little shortcut. Right, let's finish this guy's face off. Source out his nose here. Now you can see that I've got a little ridge there on the nose, and you can see where it touches the top of the lip and the cheeks. Probably needs sorting out. The nose probably needs to be pushed forward. So I'm going to sort that out later. You also see I've got these areas here, which is in the mouth. Uh, this is where there was a hole in the model. So I'm just going to just smooth these out. And then what I'm going to do for the actual eyes, I'm not going to use the smooth tool. I'm going to use something else called the smudge tool. Now the smudge tool is really useful. What it gets used for is just basically pushing material. But what we've found is if you push material one way and then push it back the other way, it actually acts as a smoothing tool, but it maintains the detail. So if you push one way, push back, it will basically keep the same shape but it will smooth that shape out rather than it being all rough so you can see here with the folds in the eye I can go forward and go back and it will basically keep the detail rather than a smoothing tool which wouldn't keep the detail and it smooths it out okay so nice little tip if you wanted to keep the detail then use the smudge tool and go backwards and forwards. So let's do the other eye using the same technique. So I'm going forwards and then back and it just keeps the detail. Now obviously I'm doing this really really quick so you'd probably spend a little bit longer doing this. So let's just smudge areas down. Now you can use it basically to push material, that's what it's actually for. So there you can see on the nose just pushing some material down, just smoothing that out there on the edges. Now you can see that the nose is sort of sunk in, so I need to lift that up in a moment. Just smooth off the mouth there. Now to do the hair, we use exactly the same technique. So we use the smudge tool and I'll show you how you can get it looking really nice and realistic. Now I'm just going to do half of this. And then you can see what the other half looks like. So just smudge the hair and you just basically follow the way that it's actually going. Okay, so just follow the way that the hair is going and just smudge it so it smooths the hair. Now 
Now I've not really got much information here so I'm just going to sort of create my own hair. So just follow this around here, like so. And what I actually done for the ear here, because the ear didn't really scan very well, was that I just smudged the hair over the, the ear, as you can see here. Now, another thing to add more detail is if you use the carving tool, use that quite small, and then you can sort of add any troughs basically within the hair. So if you go over all of the hair using the carving tool, and then once you've done that, you can use the smudge again, and it will create more realistic looking hair. So I'm just going to do half this and I've got to basically fill in the bits at the top. So if I start smudging this in now, it'll make the hair look a lot more realistic. Okay, another thing that you can do to add even more detail is to use the deposit tool. So if you deposit, so it makes the hair higher, you can create really nice folds, especially after you've done the carve and then smudge that in. So if you deposit and then just start smoothing this in, it will create some really nice folds for you.
Okay, so let's close the smudge tool now. And I'm going to sort out the nose here. I need to sort of bring that up a little bit because it's lying below the cheese. It looks as though it's been pushed in. Now this is quite hard to do because it's it's a, a front facing model rather than the side profile. So what I'm going to do is create a, a new relief and I'm going to call this nose one. I'll just show you a few ways that you can actually get around this and you can bring it up. Now what you need to make sure that you do is do this on a separate relief so you don't affect the original relief. Okay, so it's non-destructive. And then what you can do is create just draw smooth polylines. Just create a polyline around the nose here. Now, as you can see, I'm not doing this accurately. I just want to basically plunk a bit of material on there. Okay, so let's open up the shape editor. And two ways that you can do this, just basically creating some material. So I'm going to create a dome. Now you can see that that's pushing the nose up. It's not affecting what's lying underneath there. Okay, so this is just a separate shape. Okay, so let's bring that up. Let's say to a bit there. And then apply that when I'm happy with it and I can close that. Okay, let's delete that vector. Now you can see that I've added this material. Now that's just not affected the original one. Okay, so that's its own layer. Okay, so if I stay on that layer, I can actually sculpt underneath the original layer, basically. So I can sculpt this nose and it won't affect the original layer. So let's go to the smudge tool and I'm going to do a bit of a large radius there and I can start smudging this in. So then it sort of blends in with what's lying underneath there. Okay, so if I just start blending this material in, you can see it's sort of forming the shape that it's supposed to. Okay, so I've just blended in at the top there, so it just fits in. And I've got my nose sitting above the cheeks. Now, obviously, that's a very, very quick way of doing it. You might spend a lot longer actually sculpting underneath there, just so it fits a little bit better. Now, if I wanted to, I could basically open up the Erase tool, just drop it down just a touch. So I'll do that just with a really, really large brush there. And you can see that if I press Control, it will bring it back. So I'll just show you again. Let's just switch that in. That's more of the nice, the right sort of height that I want. Previously, it was probably a little bit too high. And now you can see that I've got the height on the nose. Now that's all that that nose relief layer is. And it's just basically adding material underneath the original. Now, if I want to bring it up where the lip is, where the nose touches by the nostrils, <coughs> let's create quite a sharp edge. And I'm just going to basically smudge this lip into the nostril. Okay, so it hasn't got this little trough in there. Okay, so that's one thing that I can do with that. Let's just smudge that in. Now 
And that's made it look a little bit tighter there. And then I can just move that out around the edge. Now, obviously, I'm doing this really, really quick. I'll probably spend a little bit longer doing this. Okay, so let's make a new layer now, and I'm going to call this Nose 2. And I'm going to try and bring that lip up a little bit, that top, or the bottom of the nose there. I'll try and bring bring it up and create a bit more material there. And I'm going to do this in a different way than creating the shape editor. So I'm going to follow this area around here. Just make it blend in a little bit nicer. So let's just do that. And what I'm going to do is create a, a fade or an angle. I'm going to create an angle plane. So it basically tilts it up at one end. So I select both points, so from there to there. And at point one, I want this to be one millimeter higher. And at two, I want it to be exactly as it is. So it's basically just going to tilt this up. Okay, so let's just delete this vector here. And you can see it's just tilted this material up. Okay, so it looks like he's got a little bit of a weird moustache. But that's underneath both of those reliefs. So it's not affecting either of the previous reliefs. So what I can start doing now is sculpting on this layer as well. So let's make this a little bit larger. Let's say like so. And I can start moving this upwards. Now I've got the smoothness set here. So let's revert. Let's change the smoothness. So I'm just pushing this all up like so. I'm going to create quite a large smooth. So let's smooth all of this out. And then I'm going to create a large smudge and then start smudging this out into the cheeks. Okay, so I'm just working this in. Like so. So you can see that it's basically built up that area. So all that that layer is, is just that. Then you've got the previous nose and the original layer. Okay, so I've already got this saved within my clip art library, one that I'd done previously. Now I'm not going to finish this one off because it's going to take a little while just to smooth everything out. So I'm going to show you how we basically put everything together and show you how to do that. So I'm going to create a new model and I'm going to do this at a really high resolution. So the maximum that we can get is 4,000 points. Now, a lot of people, especially within the minting industry, want to do this a lot higher than the 4,000 resolution. And I'll show you a little tip now, just how you can actually get this higher. Now, a word of warning, if you do do this higher, then obviously you need a fast computer. If you're doing this on a slow computer, it will just take absolutely ages to calculate anything.
Okay, so that's why we don't set the option that you can actually go higher than 4,000. Okay, so I'll show you how you can do it, but if you've got a slow computer, it will probably slow it right down. So, in order to do that, I need to do a new model, but specify the pixel size. So, if I say I want the width and the height to be 8,000, I'm not going to save the changes. It's going to create a new model for me. Now, as you can see on the right-hand side here, it's 8,000 millimeters by 8,000 millimeters, but the pixels are 8,000 by 8,000. Okay, so it's high resolution, but it's also very, very large. Now, the way that we can get around creating an 8,000 by 8,000 pixel model is if we now go to set size. And if I set size and change the height and the width to 40, let's say, select OK, it will change the height and the width to 40, but importantly, it will keep the pixels the same. So I've now got a 40 millimeter square model, but it's 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. Okay, so if I switch to the 3D view, I'm gonna start assembling the half of the coin. So let's create a circle. Now the good thing here is that I've got something called snap hints on, and I want to do this on the center, and you can see that it's given me a circle there. Now this is what we call snap hints. It's basically just hinting at where the center is. So it gives me sort of a guideline. So let's create a circle. Let's say diameter 38.6 and create and then I'm going to offset this vector inwards let's do this 1.5 millimeters just select offset now you notice that I'm doing this in the 3D view um, you can do pretty much everything in the 3D view and the 3D view just acts like a 2D view if you just select to choose a view from the top. So it's just basically a 2D view. So let's create some text. Now I quite like this droid serif font. It's quite a nice font for doing text. Now if you want to see any of the fonts, just select the drop down and it will list all the fonts that are installed in my Windows folder. So anything that you want, just install it on the Windows in your folder or in on your PC and it will show up within ArtCam. So true type fonts, single line fonts, they'll all show up. The size, let's change that to let's say two. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> so I'm going to type in the art of making money. And then I'm going to select a curve in order to wrap around. So let's select the curve and then I'm going to basically pick this center here. So this blue point is basically my handle that I can move and I can snap this to any of the quadrants. Okay. And I can do this on the other side like so. And I need to change it to below line. That looks okay, so let's select create. Now I can also do this by just selecting the circle that I've got here and then just going straight into the text tool and it would automatically know that I want to do this on the curve. So let's type in Matthew Bolton. Let's snap to the bottom here. 
Now I need to change this so the alignment is above line. And you can see that they're not really matching up. So I need to play about with the size of this. So then that they both match up. So let's try 2.3. Let's create that. Now if I want to edit this text, all that I need to do is right click on the art of making money and it still allows me to edit the text. So if I just select all of that text, and then I can change the size of it. So that looks okay. So there we have my text. So let's import the clip art. So this is the Matthew Bolton that I've done earlier. And you can see that I've trimmed off the bottom. So let's resize this chap. And let's just get him in the center there like so. And when I'm happy with that, I can paste him down. turn off the relief clip art library let's rotate him around so you can see him a little bit so there you can see my finished one this is from the exact same 3d model you can see the hairs a lot better because I spent a lot longer doing this so let's build up the actual coin now so let's rename that relief layer let's call that Matthew Bolton let's create another layer and I'm going to call this coin height so I'm just going to basically add some height to this so open up the shape editor let's just add the start height let's say of about 2 and then apply that so it just creates a, a flat on layer And you can see I've got Matthew Bolton just sitting on the top of the coin. So let's select the inside circle. Create a, let's create a new layer. And I'm going to call this recess. Recess dish. Open up the shape editor. And you can see here that the actual relief of Matthew Bolton is sticking above the coin. Now I want this to be sunk in, so a nice little trick that you can do is create a recess and also create a dome, so you can get more height in there. So what we're going to do is create a, a round shape, so here you can see that's at 45, so let's bring it down, and I can do it all in real time. It basically shows me how this is going to look. I'm going to do it minus three degrees, so you can hardly see it over that distance. And I'm going to add the start height. So this is going to basically create a flat drop of minus 0.25. Okay, so I've just got this little edge and I've got this dome in there, which is basically taking all of the height. So let's just apply that. Now if we take a look at the sides, you can see that all of that Matthew Bolton artwork is sitting below the actual height of the coin. So let's make a new layer. And I'm going to call this text. Let's turn on the vectors, select my text. I'm just going to do the same thing for this, just add a start height, let's say 0 0.25 so then it's sitting flush with the top, and then select apply. And there you can see my text. Okay, so what I need to do now is add some angles onto these or add some draft, so then when it's struck it will come out the die. 
Okay, so let's add material to this because if I remove material, there wouldn't be anything left. So let's add 20 degrees. So you can see it's just added draft onto all of that, whatever that relief layer is. Now I can do the same for the, the dish. So we just put a, an angle around that edge. So just put 20 degrees on there. And also for Matthew Bolton himself. Just add 20 degrees onto the edges there. So there you can see our finished design showing you how to use the emboss relief wizard and a few of the sculpting techniques that you can use in order to basically smarten up the relief that you're left with. So I hope that you found this demonstration useful. Many thanks for watching and take care. Goodbye.